Hello, welcome to my talk. This is Fantastic NLU, Loki, Simpai, and the Solver to Math Word Problems. The first question is, of course, who am I? Well, my name is Peter Wolf, and the second question usually asked is, why choose this topic about math? I don't know if you recall an Asian guy in your high school days、uh, who was really crazy about math, and that guy is. Definitely not me. I'm not that kind of person. Actually, I'm the founder of Joytown Linguistic Tech, and I consider myself an enthusiast for NLP, NLU, and strong AI. Therefore, what really draws my attention to math word problem is actually not the math part, but the word part. In today's talk, I'd like to share with you these informations. First. We will talk about what is math word problem. With this definition, I'll further discuss、uh, semantics in image and the semantics in natural languages, and then we'll come up with a problem of evaluating what understanding is. And then we will take math as our tool and、uh, introduce the ways to solve math word problems. Since we have introduced some ways to solve math word problems,、um, we will do a little. Performance review on approaches of machine learning and approaches that is not machine learning. And finally, I'd like to introduce a system we built with、uh, Loki and the Simpai, and show you how they work together to solve math word problem. I've been keep saying math word problems, but what are math word problems? Well, math word problems are also known as quantitative reasoning problem. It is defined as a problem described in natural languages that requires your mathematical skills or scientific knowledge to solve. Mathematical skills, including the knowing what addition is, what subtraction is, and so on and so forth. As for scientific knowledge, that means that,、uh, for example, you know that you have a basketball in hand and you throw it to the wall. You still have the basketball, but At the same time, you also know that if you have a glass in hand and you throw it to the wall, you won't have the glass anymore. That kind of knowledge is called scientific knowledge. And to solve a math word problem, we require your math skill and your scientific knowledge. It may be difficult to follow up, so let's see some examples. Here is an example. A story goes like: As a cat lover. Sarah has three cats as her pets. She also feeds seven stray cats living around her house every day, and every cat needs a meal a day at least. The question goes: How many cats does Sarah have to prepare food for every day? Well, if you are doing the traditional NLP, apparently the tool you use is count. We just use this story as our input SDR, which is input string. And the input string will count the cats. The answer we'll get is three. Apparently, that is not the correct answer. But how did it get three? Well, let's count it. Here is one cats, and here is the second cats, and we have the third cats here. So all in all, the story as the input string gives the count three cats. That is not the answer we're expecting. To get the answer we're expecting, we have to use a technique called natural language understanding, aka NLU. With natural language understanding, we will know that there should be two groups of cats. Assuming that、uh, the first group is cat X, it has three cats in this group, and、uh, the second second group is the cat Y, and he has seven cats in this group. To answer the question. How many cats does Sarah have to bear food for every day? We have to add up cat X and the cat Y to get the answer. Since we know that the cat X is three cats and the cat Y is seven cats, so the answer will be ten cats. This is the answer we are expecting. I know that most AI engineers are not familiar with natural language, but image processing. So here I use an image as a beginning to illustrate my idea in this talk. We see that、uh, there are already tons of different tools or AI models that can do object detection. But with object detection, 
the result we can get is usually something like this, which goes, there may be mice, a cat, and a dog in the picture. On the other hand, what we need is image interpretation, which is to get the semantics out of the picture. Once we get the semantics out of the picture, we expect ourselves to get something like this. It is a sunny day in a park, describing the background of the image, and a cat with three mice on its shoulder is sitting on the back of a dog, which describes the relationship among all the entities in this picture. But the problem is that there are just too many ways to rephrase this description and still maintain its main idea. So we won't know if the machine really understands the meaning of this picture or not. Let's draw back from image processing to text processing. The problem is still the same. For example, we have a text here, which is about the Miss Heard and uh, Mr. Depp, and it's comparatively easy for us to come up with a rephrasing model that we can generate various versions of the same text with the attempt to keep its main idea. But we still don't know how to evaluate which of this version really understands the main idea of this original text. Therefore, the, the problem is that we don't know how to evaluate understanding. In order to solve this problem, we use math. Why would we choose math is because a math word problem, or sometimes called a quantitative reasoning problem, that usually has only one certain answer. Obviously, we can make sure that if the NLU model really understands the semantics in the text, as long as it gets the correct answer, along with reasonable explanations on each step. If the NLU model provides correct answer with reasonable explanations, then we know that this machine or this model does understand the text as we humans do. On the other hand, if the NLU model provides a wrong answer, we can still trace back where it gets wrong with its reasoning steps as well. In that way, we can help it improve. Now we know what to do, but how? Well, one way to do it is to have a language parser, which is just like the image interpreter we mentioned earlier. This language parser would help us identify what are the entities and what are the relationships among them. For example, a sentence like this, Alfred walks for the wings as a butler in Wayne's manner, will be translated into this graph. All these circles indicate entities and these lines indicate a relationship between entities. And this is the way we represent semantics because semantics is the combination of relations and entities. But surprisingly, nobody wants to solve math word problem in this way. That is because defining what makes sense in semantics is just too hard and requires too few GPUs. I'm guessing that we wanted yours to be warmer. Otherwise, we won't encourage NLP engineers to use more and more GPUs on the language models that are bigger and bigger, right? Since defining what semantics is is very difficult, we come up with another solution that can avoid defining what semantics is and uh, consumes more GPUs as promised. In this approach, we want to provide many, 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 many word problems, and the model will probably learn to align the text with equations and thus provide the possibility to solve the problems and get answer. As we can see here, the older data sets provide at least two things. One is the text describing the math word problem, and the other part is the equations. We hope that by providing many, many, many of them, the machine will automatically learn that these things should be aligned. After all, pretending that the semantics as alignment problem is way much easier. Although that sounds like a good idea, but ideas are just ideal. The reality is pretty nasty. We already find that there are many, many papers adopting this approach and have published their works. For example, in this paper, despite that they have used multiplied the, the size of the training data from 138 to 9,000, but 
the performance didn't improve much. As you can see that with 138 training data size, the SIN accuracy is 5.5. And when it comes to 9,000 training data size, the accuracy is only 18.4. Believe me, if the Asian guy in your high school has done 9,000 math work problems for practice, the only gets 18.4 as his score. Any Asian parents will tell you that F means you need to find a new family. What's interesting is that in the same paper, I noticed a paragraph goes like this. In implementing SIM, we do not use any POS tagging or synthetic parsing feature for a similarity calculation. This method gets an accuracy of 71.2% on ALG514 dataset and 49.0% on single EQ dataset. Well, 71.2% is not bad. It is not bad. Especially, it didn't use any POS tagging or synthetic parsing features. But when I opened the AOG dataset, I found something like this. In addition to the equations and the question text, it also provides a template. It is almost like bringing a cheat sheet to attend a math test. Just like Python is code, a battery included with programming language, ALG514 is a cheat sheet included dataset. Before I know this, I would say that 71.2 is a not bad score. But now with this cheat sheet and you only get 71.2, it's a C minus. Well, you know, in Asian family, C means can't have dinner. Math word problem is not only a popular topic in the English world. It is also a trending issue on the other side of the earth. We have math word problems in Chinese too. Here in this page, I'd like to show you two approaches. On the left hand side, it is a research done by Tencent AI Lab with machine learning ways. They get 64.7 percentage on math 23K dataset, and of course, much, much higher score on ALG 514 dataset since it's included. On the other hand, in Joytown, we use an approach that is not machine learning. As a result, we get 98.57 on the first trial and 99.29 on the second trial. That looks amazing and definitely is a hard A score. But you know what Agent Perry will say? A means average. Although it is only average score, but uh, we, we can see that there's still a big difference between 79 and 99. The difference forced us to re rethink of the math word problem solver and its approaches we are going to take. We have seen that researchers using alignment technique with machine learning trying to solve the math word problem, but it won't work. On the other hand, we have tried something in Chinese math word problem with the technique to define what semantics is, and it does solve the problem. Therefore, in the rest of this talk, I will use this technique to solve English math word problems. But how we do it? Or you can ask, what do we do? Well, easy. We just pick out a POS tagging and the synthetic parsing features that are ditched for no good reason by machine learning approaches and we implement them into a NLU system called Loki. Loki stands for Linguistic Oriented Keyword Interface. And since it is a keyword interface, it will parse the sentence and tap the POS of words and extract the key information out of the sentence. For example, in this sentence, there are four stacks of chocolate puddings. It will parse and tap like this. You can see that this is a classifier according to the synthetic parser, and these are tagged with the, their POS tagging, in addition to parsing and tagging of the natural language sentences. Loki can also generate code templates. In this code templates it generated, we found something interesting, which is to solve all the math problems, we only need three steps. And no matter what question we are facing, the three steps are the same. The first step is to find out which entity needs to be assigned as a symbol. And the second step is to assign this symbol 
and uh, convert it into a SymPy object. And thirdly, we have to extract a number that is related to this entity and pack them together with the SymPy symbol object and then pass it to SymPy. Let me show you the source code to illustrate what I'm saying here. Here is the intent called a positive number, which is designed to do the addition. Here you can see that in this sentence extract from a math work problem, which goes the restroom has 175 normal chairs and 20 big chairs for babies. The processing steps goes from assigning symbols, assigning variable to symbols, and assign value to symbols. Let's see another one. Here's another one. There are six chief assistant and two servers. We can see assign symbols, assign variable to symbols, and assign value to symbols. Let's see another one. Assign symbols, assign variable to symbols, assign value to symbols. And another one. Assign symbols, assign variable to symbols, assign value to symbols. It is almost like a standard procedure to solve all math work problems. Actually, to put it in this way, it reminds us that it is the true spirit in mathematical education. We want children to identify which entities mentioned in a math work problem needs to be calculated. And then we want children to extract the quantity related to the entity and do the math calculation. That is to say, with Loki, we can help machine to think like a human. When using a solver, the whole system is arranged like this. First, we input a math work problem to Loki. And then, with the syntax parser and the pure tagger, Loki will then extract the key information out of the text. For example, in this problem, we guess that the entity fountain is mentioned once, and therefore is indexed zero. And when it's mentioned, the quantity related to it is 3. We also notice that the table are mentioned twice, so they are indexed as 0 and 1. And the quantity related to these tables when they are mentioned is 5 and 7, respectively. And finally, Loki also processes this sentence, how many tables are there in total, and come up with the idea that oh, it's the number of the table you are looking for. Therefore, the intent is to calculate the number of the tables in this math work problem. And they come up with the equation to get this answer by adding table 0 and table 1. Once this information are ready, log your packet and send it to SymPy. SymPy will be then able to do the math and come up with the answer as well. You may be wondering how POS and the syntax parsing module works. Actually, I have given the details in my last year's talk in Python Tech 1. So I won't go through it again here, otherwise it will look like I'm giving one talk in two Python events. Somehow it feels like cheating. But since log is actually working like a mechanism of structure pattern matching, so we don't need to list all the possible sentences here. After all, the reason that we use pattern is because patterns by themselves are enough to cover a variety of possibilities. And therefore, we don't need to get 9,000 that many training data for Loki to learn the patterns. And when it comes to learning patterns, I'd like to give you a short example. Here we see that by providing a um, sentence to Loki, Ashley buys a big bag of candy. Loki will learn its structure like this. The first word is a person, the second word is by, it's a verb. And the second word is a determiner, the fourth word, the green one, is optional. The sentence can be actually buys a big bag of candy, or actually buys a bag of candy. With or without this modifier, doesn't influence the meaning much. And uh, the next one is an entity, which indicates this back here. And the next one is a function word, which is the off. And the last one is another entity. With this pattern, we don't need to bring a cheat sheet. Lambda itself has revealed how the information is organized in it. So while we input Jack bought a small piece of cake, 
the sentence will be considered as having the same pattern as this one, and therefore we can use the same coding block to process the information out of this. Or in another sentence, Peter built a full size of pizza. Loki doesn't need to see this sentence before. It doesn't even need to know what pizza is. As long as this sentence is POS processed and uh, synthetic parsed with this structure, identical with the structure pattern that Ashley Sinus has here, we will be able to process this sentence and extract the key information with the code blocks that we write under the Ashley sentence. As a little proof, let me show you how it works. This is how Loki looks. And here is the project we are doing here. It has all these intents, and let's go into this one. You will see the Ashley sentence is here. Ashley bought a big bag of candy. Okay. And uh, this intent doesn't know anything about Peter. So we can find Peter here. He only occurs once. This is the only Peter. Peter buys a full slice of pizza. And it tells us that this sentence, Peter buys a full slice of pizza, has identical structure pattern as this one, Ashley buys a big bag of candy. And to process the information with this structure pattern, we can extract that there's something important as Peter for slice and the pizza. And Loki also joined a code like this, where you can do your own coding in this code block. And with all these many utterances are produced, we can download the code template in Python, in Java, or MIT APP Inventor 2 formats. Once we download the source code template in Python, Java, or MIT APP Inventor 2 format, we can just complete the code blocks and you are good to go. I would love to go through the whole process from beginning to show you how Loki works, but I can't, I'm sorry. This is PyCon and we don't like to see any live demo of commercial systems unless it's Google school things. I don't know why Google have this kind of privilege in almost every technical conference, even without being sponsored to PyCon APEC this year. It is like uh, people would automatically ignore the fact that Google is also a commercial company. Anyway, at this page, I just want to show you that our structure pattern matching mechanism is driven by POS tagging and the syntax parsing. Therefore, we don't need a training data set of 9,000 multiple problems. As you've seen earlier, we only got uh, utterances on under the number of 40. As for the performance, I'll show you in the later live demo section. We have explained what happened in the left hand part of the system and briefly explained how POS tagging and the synthesis parsing modules work. Now I'd like to spend some time on the right half of the system. I'd like to invite you to install SimPy and feel its power doing math with me. But uh, please be careful when you are installing SimPy. There is another module called SimPy, S-I-M-P-Y, and it is not spelled as SimPy, S-Y-M-P-Y. Uh, the S-I-M-P-Y SimPy is a discrete event simulation and is different from the SimPy S-Y-M-P-Y we're using here. SimPy means Symbolic Mathematics Python Library. To put its magic in one sentence, it does math. I'd like to give you a few examples to show you what it is like to work with SimPy. To begin with, uh, we can do a simple question. For example, just import SimPy. Assuming that we have five cats and then 10 dogs, and we want to simplify to calculate the, how many animals we have in total. Therefore, we can do something like this. X is uh, simplify symbol of cat. And Y 
on the other hand, is the simple simple of dog. We have the equation, which is a string. It's composed of cat plus dog. By adding up the number of a cat and the number of dog, we can have the answer of how many animals we have. And then we have to turn this equation into a simple object. So the equation is simplified equation. The simplify here will turn this string equation into a simple simplified object. And then we're ready to do the magic. The answer will be equation substitute. I'm sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. We just said that we have five cats and we have 10 dogs. And the answer we can get from uh, adding up five cats and 10 dogs is 15 animals. Not only so, actually, Simpa can do binary first order equation as well. For example, for example, if we have x plus symbol x and y as a symbol y. And we have this equation as um, let's just simplify to solve it. x plus y minus 22 is 0 and uh, x minus y plus 4 is 0. We want to calculate what x and y is. Here we get an x as 9 and a y is 13. So 9 plus 13 minus 22 is 0 and uh, x the 9 minus 13 plus 4 is 0. That is to show you that uh, Senpai can do binary first order equations or even higher orders. As I mentioned earlier, what really draws my attention is not the math part, but the word part. So from a linguist's viewpoint to see this equation, what I see is something like this. It is saying some uh, semantics as well. The x and the y the variables are entities, and the plus symbol here is actually describing the relationship between these two entities. Once I can find the numbers behind this entity, I can get the semantics as 6 out of this equation. So like what we have shown you earlier, we transfer string into a uh, simple symbol object. And then we transfer the equation string into a simple simplify object. And finally, we get an equation solver by sending them to simple. From a longer distance to see this procedure, it's actually saying this is math, this is the word, and this is the problem solver. Therefore, we have a math word problem solver in hand with the combination of Loki and simple. Now we know how the whole system works, we can have a brand new vision to see an example. Assuming that we have a multiple problem like this, which goes uh, a new order of instrument content today. There are eight guitars and uh, three flutes from the order, and uh, together with the five guitars that the store already has in hand, the question goes, how many guitars are there in total? By sending this problem to Loki, Loki will extract the keywords as guitar and uh, calculate that since guitars are mentioned twice, their index will be 0 and 1. And don't forget that flute is mentioned once as well. Uh, therefore, its index is 0 and its quantity is 3. But still, the question is asking about how many guitars. So we extract 5 and 8 and uh, put them here 
to pack him as a pair tuple. And then these guitars are transformed into a simple symbol object for further calculation. We also extract 5 and 8 and then put them together and we're good to go to send them to SimPy. Once SimPy gets this information, SimPy will be able to use this equation and come up with the answer as 13. Here is the super code illustrating what just happened in the, on the SimPy side. And all in all, the reason why we can do this math work problem is because we have Loki and the U system to transform natural language sentences into calculation value information packages for the SimPy to process. I know that for a system of this size, everything looks like magic. So in order to show you that everything I said in this talk is actually doable, I provide my source code here in this URL. Besides, I also prepared a live demo web page where you can try it yourself. But please be noted that uh, all these models uh, trend with the math work problem is for students under sixth grade elementary school. Please be warned that don't let your children get in touch with this website. The reason why I'm, ra I'm raising this warning is because I, uh, I don't want this website to interfere the development of your children's mathematical skill development. Anyway, let's see some light demo before the end. Here is math word problem we can try. We have designed all these math word problems to uh, test the robustness of this system. I will show you what we designed in this text later. For well, here, a brick layer stacks bricks in two rows with 10 bricks in each row. How many bricks are there in total? Well, the answer will be 20. It times up the, the two rows and the, the 10 bricks, since there are 10 bricks in each row and there are two rows in total. Okay, how about our next one? This one looks like a multiplying question. What about this one? Well, this one we have just seen earlier. A new order of instruments comes in today. Another a guitar and three flutes. And here is another one. This one is about uh, a new order of instrument. Okay, this one is about, uh, okay, we have seen this one earlier. It's about the uh, guitar number in the instrument store. Let's try it. Okay, the answer is 13, of course, but how about we want to try something else? Let's see if it can answer the number of flutes. By changing this from guitar to flutes, we provide this system another question to solve. Just like a new order of instrument comes in today, I give you a lot of government information and just want to ask you how many flutes I have. The answer is three. How about this one? Next to the three juice fountains, there are five tables. On the other side of the cafeteria, there are seven tables. The question is asking how many fountains are there in total? Okay, I'm asking fountains because the number and the entity has another word blocking their direct connection. It is like, uh, unlike what we have seen earlier, the number and the entity has nothing in between. But here we have a juice in, in the middle. Let's see if the system can deal with this situation. I'm asking the number of the fountain. Okay, the number is three. It extracts the fountain as, uh, it found that there are three fountains and uh, two tables. Um, it found that the fountain is mentioned once with quantity 3 and the table is mentioned twice with the quantity 5 and 7. Okay, so we can see that um, this system can deal with 
the expressions where number and uh, its entity is blocked by one word. How about two words? Ten piece of gum. Gum. I'm sorry, not gum. Okay. Adriana has ten pieces of gum to share with her friend, and we want to know how many pieces of gum does Adriana have now. Okay, so the answer is 13 by adding up a, a piece gum 0 and a piece gum 1. So the piece gum 0 is the first time when the piece of gum is mentioned. Uh, the quantity is 10, and the second time the piece of gum are mentioned, with, there are even more words blocking the connection from the quantity 3 and the piece of gum. More pieces of gum. Okay. But this system is robust enough to solve all these problems. So far, we have seen that with POS tagging ability, syntax parsing ability, and its structure pattern matching driven mechanism, Loki NLU system can extract key information and pass them to SimPy for calculation. We also have seen the equations explaining how the answer is calculated. But a trustworthy system must have the ability to be traced back to the root cause of its error. So, can our NLU system do that? The answer is yes. Let me show you step by step. Uh, first, let's change this math word problem into a very similar version in order to use our structure pattern matching mechanism. Here, I want to change this person's name into Alan. Alan has 10 boxes and change her number. Alan has two boxes of paper to print his work. To print his works. There wasn't enough paper for all the printing. P R A N T I N G. T N G. So the printing. So he went to the bookshop to get, let's see, it's two, let's get six more. To get six more boxes of paper. So how many boxes of paper does Alan have now? These two mass word problems have very similar structure pattern. Therefore, our system can detect them. But here comes some error. Let's see. The answer is box paper plus six. What is box paper? And we trace it back. We'll see that uh, Loki finds out that there for the box for box paper one. This is the second time when the box of paper is mentioned. The quantity is six. But he missed that the first time when the boxes of paper is mentioned. So he didn't get the quantity 2. We can see up here. Here shows that in this intent, Alan has two boxes of paper to print his work is processed. And uh, he found out that there is a structure pattern matched with the structure inside this sentence, which is this structure. Seven stacks of brownies. Let's copy that and uh, look it up in this intent. It's in positive number intent, so we come to here and we look for this section. Since the arrow, see, since the arrow is about a number, so we can just directly take a look at this, the third part, because the third part assigns the value to the symbols, which deals with a number. And by investigating here, we find out that uh, we can set a breakpoint here and run again. Oh, by the way, this is Wing IDE, the best Python IDE I've ever used. I really love it. I'm not sponsored by them, but I really love it. I just like to share information. Here, the argument zero is 
two boxes of and uh, the argument one is box paper. After this number extractor, we are supposed to get argument zero as two. But while assigning this uh, quantity to the box paper, we missed. We made a mistake here and uh, assigned uh, and assigned argument one, which is box paper. So we have to change it here to fix this error. By changing this index from one to zero, we can rerun this program again. This time with the correct answer. By adding up the two and the six, we get a correct answer. But in the last round, when we see the arrow, we can trace back the arrow from this debugging information and pinpoint at which part of the code causes this problem. This feature makes Loki a trustworthy NLU system. And that is all I want to show you in my demo today. As a summary, I've shown that the semantics is the next level AI, both in image processing and uh, natural language processing, or I should say natural language understanding. With POS and syntax parser, a structure pattern matching driven NLU system can be much better than a machine learning driven ones. Besides, we have implemented a math work problem solver with Loki and SimPy that can provide not only correct answer, but also explainable steps to the answer. And if something goes wrong, the debug information can also help us pinpoint where the root cause is. The system itself does not cover all the structure patterns in every math work problems, but it should be seen as a proof of concept showing that this is a viable approach and the system works great. That is basically everything I wanted to share in this talk, but before the end, Please allow me to quote a sentence from Star Trek series, Space, the Final Frontier. I believe that one day soon we human beings will be ready for interstellar migration. When that time comes, a trustworthy strong AI computer with reasoning ability and a math work problem solving technique is essential. So we built this Loki as an infrastructure for strong AI and we showed its potential in this talk. Yes. Loki is a commercial system, just like many Google's cool things. And yes, Loki also comes with free quota hourly, just like many Google cool things too. Sincerely, I'd like to invite you to board this rocket to next level AI. Let's build more strong AI applications, shall we? Thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you. I'm Peter Wolf.